Hi guys, I'm Lisa for those of you who are new and for those of you who aren't, you're all my friends and I welcome you back. <laughs> so for today's video, I'd like to do something book related because as most of you would probably know, I am a bookworm and I love reading, it's my passion, literature is just everything to me. So recently I've just been dwelling on like thoughts about life, so I've been very philosophical, so I guess that's what led me to filming this. Um, yeah, self-awareness. It's all in the title. Um, I don't even know if that's what I'm titling it, but whatever. I'm going to be talking about my favorite books that are related to this theme. Before I get into any of the novels, I'd like to read this quote to you. I didn't leave because I stopped loving you. I left because the longer I stayed, the less I loved myself. That is like hashtag deep, like I really feel it. Um, I don't know about you guys, I don't know if you've ever had any love affairs or <laughs> love affairs. Well, whatever, whatever the case may be. But um, yeah, this really speaks to me. This actually belongs to the first novel that I'm going to be discussing and it is called Milk and Honey and it is by an author whose name I will never be able to pronounce or maybe I can, but I don't know how to. So it is uh, Rupi Core or something like that. And I lie because it is not a novel, but it is it's kind of like an anthology, you know, like poetry and prose. Um, and it's amazing. It literally took me one hour to finish it. It contains images and, you know, like one page. You can have like four lines. Like it's really short. But this is more for when you're feeling really down, when it comes to a failed relationship, which God forbid something like that happens to you because I know what heartache is, okay? I don't care if I'm young, I still know what it feels like. It's actually divided into four parts and it's literally the hurting, the loving, the breaking, and the healing. It helps you cope with pain and it reinforces that everything will be okay and in a sense, it teaches you how to love yourself, which, you know, this is what the quote says, you have to love yourself. So these books are by no means correlated in any way in their genre. So the next novel is Shatter Me, and again, these names, authors off like the craziest names. If I ever become an author, which I do plan to someday, um, people are probably gonna mess up my last name. Yeah, then the joke's on me. So, this is by, let me try and pronounce it, Zahere, Zahere, something like that, Mahi. Yeah. So, this is your dystopian story where there's this whole new government system. It's called the Re Establishment. And the protagonist, her name is Juliet. She's 17 years old and she is in an asylum because she killed a little boy. But plot twist, she didn't intend to kill him. It just happened naturally because I guess she was just born with this superpower. If you like superheroes and such, then pick this up. Juliet has a really hard time accepting herself. She kind of just takes the blame for everything. Then there's this like head guy or there's like this leader in this society. He wants to take advantage and abuse her power because you know he's your antagonist he's the guy who's like I want destruction totalitarianism just forced into this oppression and she doesn't know what to do about it until something happens you just kind of see her grow and that's the best part of it all because you know novels in the end they're supposed to teach you something and in which case it's again self-love so the next novel called Winter Girls and it is by Laurie House Anderson. This has so much meaning in my life. Basically it's about a girl named Leah who has a best friend named Cassie kind of competing to be thinner than each other. As a result Cassie dies and Leah is left with a guilty conscience and her own battle to become thin. So obviously it's about an anorexic girl she goes through so much and it's very dreadful like as I read this 
I felt it. Like I really, I felt like I'm just this character. Um, obviously partly because I also was going through something when I was reading this. It really reveals that we have to love ourselves no matter what kind of body we have and to put health as a priority as opposed to appearance because you know in the end when you're older you're gonna have wrinkles you're probably going to put on weight you know life changes in the end you're still stuck with the same soul and that's who you are very self-deprecating last leaves falling is by sarah benwell and I feel like I've talked about this book before on my channel. Um, I know I definitely have, maybe once or twice. It's actually one of the most adorable things I've ever read. It does have a very big ending. This book is set in Japan and it is about a boy who has ALS and he lives with his mother and they have a very, very close bond. Um, but he doesn't have any friends until he creates a profile online automatically starts speaking to people from you know, the world. <laughs> so he meets lovely people who become his best friends and he seems to constantly be thinking about his own death because he knows that he's bound to die at some point. He just has to make a decision on whether he wants to die sooner or later. For me it really emphasized the value of life and you know just knowing that you're important and that you have some kind of purpose to serve in the world. I suppose he just didn't really know what his purpose was. He thought, oh well, I'm just a guy who can't move. Like, what what can I possibly be doing for the world to better it? But the truth is, at least the way I see it, is that his purpose was to be like a role model or to bring love and happiness into the lives of other people because that's what he did. If you guys want like a cultural base to the novel, something Asian and because why not Asian culture is really cool Read this. this is probably one of my most favorite novels ever and it's a thriller in my opinion probably yeah it's a thriller it's definitely a thriller see again something I can partially relate to but not for the most part because um, I haven't really been in that kind of situation where I'm losing touch with reality. The way that it starts off is already creepy enough. A school burns down and Caitlin Johnson is responsible. Now the reason why is so absurd. There's a girl and she's journaling her life um, as the days go by and she has post-trauma and it's really messing with her whole head. You could you can basically take it from a depression perspective and something happened in her past and now she has this twin sister, her dear twin sister who she loves and probably will be the only person she'll love through the novel. Well, and maybe two others. It varies in that it takes a psychological perspective and not just depression. I really, really like this because it contains I think it's like news articles, uh, diary entries. So yeah, it's kind of like a mystery because you're trying to resolve what's going on. The last one is also one of my favorites and it looks like a mess because it's from the library. I'm really sorry. So it's called Lullabies for Little Criminals and it's by Heather O'Neill. It's about a girl named Baby and she's living with her father who had her at the age of 15. So he's a very young father. Initially, she's 11 but by the end of it she she ages so it's a coming of age novel marx's perspective the whole economy and equality thing so obviously she represents the proletariat your poor level of society as you know her father uh, goes on to do drugs he's kind of like a neglectful parent too but baby has to look after herself kind of just experiments with life she travels from one foster home to the next. She does little things to <laughs> make a living. She proceeds with people who downgrade her. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys soon. And if you also have any 
favorite novels under this category, then please, please feel free to comment down below. Thanks, guys. Bye.